and uh, it don't have the uh, one of the most effective lower abdominal exercises I've found there to be, but it's also one of the trickiest hanging knee raises. On this one, we really incorporate gravity into basically what is the same movement as our lying leg raise and what later developed into our decline leg raise. So on this one, again, form, arms completely straight down. We're not swinging the body up and down, keeping the knees bent and exhaling on each rep. I found the effectiveness of these hanging knee crunches to really bring out maximum definition around the lower portion is that when you focus on the movement itself right at the end when the hips come forwards you're fully breathing out the lower abs are already contracted and it's that hip tuck right at the end that's going to be a great finisher offer. So it's important you then control the legs back down and don't allow them to swing. So this would be the wrong way to do the exercise. I've got no control over that. Sure my abs are working in the sense that they're being used but I'm not really using my abs to do the exercise. So focus on the muscle group that's being worked. Now a nice variation to this exercise is you can add a small amount of resistance by like using a medicine ball between my knees. Therefore I'm engaging my inner muscles of the thigh to keep my abdominals working that little bit harder. But another variation besides that is adding a dynamic twist into the exercise. So I'll do a few reps, standard knee lifts, and then I'll do a rotation with my hips and have a look at the different muscles that come in and are involved. Once again, changing the basic exercise with just one or two variations can really have a great impact on how you form and develop these different muscle groups, besides the main six pack muscles here. If you want nicely framed, well proportionate and fully developed muscles, you need to train everything. The lower, upper, the obliques, internal, external, and even the intercostals to help frame that six, or even if you're lucky with genetics and torso length, possible eight pack. I'm not quite there just yet, but I am working on it. Next exercise I'm moving on involves resistance again and a slight dynamic or rotation in quite a standard exercise. So let me go get some weight. Now with these side bends, I don't rely on too much, certainly with weight, to really focus on developing the side area of the six pack. That's not why I'm using the weight. It's that added twist and rotation pulling me around. Think back to the exercise I just did. Instead of just holding a dumbbell and having a weight go side to side, which is really, again, the upper area of this, but more importantly, the lower portion of the back. It's that twist round to my outer shoulder rotates around, stretching out these lower external obliques and getting them to pull me back around. So even if you don't have a weight, a small kettlebell, small dumbbell, just something in this hand to help with that twist can help add to that dynamic part of the exercise and engage more of these lower hidden muscle groups that most people want to try and develop and bring out the conditioning. I'm going to stick with this style of movement, side and twist, and move on to something a little bit harder. So if you can complete 15 to 20 repetitions of these, try this next exercise and see if you can really get these lower internal and external obliques kicking in. So far I've talked about a whole host of different variables that we can look at to incorporate into abdominal training looked at repetition, technique, form, tempo, but there's one I haven't really touched upon yet. 
And that's why I've left this one for the final third work set series in this ab circuit. And that's stability. We're gonna add, or rather take away some stabilization so that more of these internal muscles in the core have to work. So check out these Swiss ball side bends. Again, it's basically just a step up or several steps up from doing our lying side bends. It's the same muscle groups being worked, just with that little bit more of a kick, that more intensity. So what I'm doing, my hand is up by my temple again. I'm bringing the elbow and the hip together, contracting, breathing out, squeezing my side muscles, but a slight rotation again to get these internal, external obliques really working. Now that I've got my hip stacked, onto a ball, I'm that much more unstable, so breathing and contracting all of these involuntary stabilizing muscles is really gonna help take my abdominal training up to that next level. But there's one more abdominal rotational exercise, and this one's quite possibly the hardest one in the entire ab circuit. So this exercise to work the obliques and the intercostals is basically one step up from those Swiss ball side bends. With the Swiss ball, we had some stability, or rather less instability than this one. I'm now using my arm and my entire body weight to have to rotate and work around my core. Let me show you. So, a T-bar, a side T-bar keeping this arm locked out. Already I'm having to support my body weight and keep all of this acting like a bridge to keep me suspended. My hips are slightly raised up so they're not sagging down. So again, more muscles required to work to hold up that weight. And then thirdly, as if that wasn't enough, I bring this arm out like a T-section, keep the elbow slightly bent, Rotate in, look at how many of the abs are now having to work. Everything that we've worked up to so far. <sighs> Breathe out, open back up. And if you're crazy enough to want to take this up to the next level, a small dumbbell, just a few pounds in there, or for the ultimate full body abdominal conditioning exercise, completely take away the stability of the bench and have your legs in some suspension straps. Okay, you might think we're done, but there's still one exercise left. And this just happens to be my favorite complete abdominal exercise, working from top to bottom and engaging everything in between. Let's check it out. These high cable rope pull down abdominal crunches are for me the ultimate abdominal exercise. You're replicating the basic crunch movement, closing the arc between the shoulders and the hips and adding resistance right where the muscle is being worked from overhead. So keeping full tension and stress on the muscle, the full abdominal region here, throughout the full range of motion. I saved this one to the end because I know when I'm done on this one, I've given it everything I've got, breathed out my last breath of air, contracted that last ounce of energy in the abs. When I've had a good work set on these, I know I've had a good abs workout. There is one variation you can add into this to really kick out these side obliques and these intercostals, the fingers, upper fingers, just below the chest. And that is lighting the weight, single arm, and add a rotation, therefore changing the dynamic of the exercise. And 
And there you have it, my top tips, tricks, and techniques for switching up your abdominal exercise routine, helping you achieve clearly defined, ripped, lean, and tight six pack abs. Join me next time when I'll be sharing with you more tips, tricks, and techniques on my favorite other muscle groups to train to show you how to maximize fat burn and increase lean, healthy muscle mass. Take care.